All right, what is up my homies and welcome today to Grey Gaming. Today we've got a very special video for you and this is another episode of Settlement Builds for Noobs, but this is going to be incorporating a lot of the different elements from pretty much all of my previous settlement builds that I've showcased on this channel. Today we are at Dalton Farm, which is part of the Far Harbor DLC. And this is actually one of the more challenging locations to build over, but I really like how this one turned out. So we're not quite a tower build, we're not quite the lighthouse build, we're not quite the promenade build. We're really a whole lot of different elements put together. So you're going to see a lot of those put together in a new sort of construction that we really haven't experimented with on this channel. So if you enjoy this, please feel free to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and please leave feedback down below in the comments. The more engagement I get on this channel, the more likely the YouTube algorithm is to share this information with other people and make this a more enjoyable channel moving forward. So just as a quick recap, Dalton Farm is unlocked via a quest that you get in the Far Harbor DLC. It is located here at the northernmost portion of the island. So if you look here, this is where you first arrive in the DLC. And this is Dalton Farm way up here at the edge of the map. So I do have a pretty sizable population here. It's not completely manned, but I think I've reached about the maximum uh, population that I can support given this build and I really just wanted to play around with it a little bit. So let's go ahead and take a look. So as you can see, there's quite a few different things going on here. You can see that this is not a level place to build. There's lots of rocks. This is on a beach. There's also some over water areas that you can construct, and there is a road that runs through here. So. We'll go through a few of these different locations as we go. I'm not going to do my usual perimeter of the settlement because, I mean, there's really not that much of a perimeter. It's just a number of different items that we have constructed here. So first and foremost, we have this arena here. And I kind of base this off of the old Oblivion arena. If you ever played Oblivion on the Xbox 360 or PC, you remember there's a whole quest line around fighting in an arena, and that's basically what this is set up for. So using the um, Contraptions Workshop, I think, it's one of the DLCs for the... Um, one of the DLCs for... Oh my gosh, for the Workshop, which adds the ability to fight. So we have red team and blue team elements. I kind of set this up as almost like a paintball arena, if anyone grew up in the early 2000s when that was still cool. Uh, so here we have a viewing deck, so we have the stands, and here we have the control panel. So there's quite a bit of power running around here. So you can actually shut the gates to basically lock your contestants in. And because once you assign them to one of these platforms, they'll immediately become hostile to whoever's on the other platform, you can also shut this gate so that they can't actually see who the other person is. So we kind of have that man trap type of situation where once they move in, then you can shut the door behind them. And once they're ready to fight, you open the gates and it is a free for all. So I'm pretty proud of how this turned out. It's got a little bit of wires running around but it's completely functional i really like it and i have tested this it works pretty decently do keep in mind that if you do assign settlers to fight each other and one of them dies it will reduce the settlement happiness because one of the settlers is now dead So I do have some elevated gun platforms. So one of the most common spawn points for people who attack is right here over in this vicinity. So having this elevated gun platform to kind of defend against that is really helpful. It, in fact, when I moved here to start recording this video, there actually was a trapper invasion going on. So I had to deal with that before I could start recording. It was kind of annoying, but that's where we are right now. So moving away from the arena, we do have this Brahmin paddock along the side. So it's just a nice, nice white picket fence. 
to encase the Brahmin in. There's only one Brahmin here, but it's a little different aesthetic from what I usually do at my settlements. Normally I either go with that concrete wall or sometimes I'll do like the hog wire wall. The picket fence is quite a bit different from what we normally do. So as you can see here, I do have multiple Brahmin feeders, but there's just the one Brahmin for now. So moving over here, we have kind of the main living quarters and industrial productivity part of the settlement. So here, this was something I was also experimenting with. We have my usual powered door and I actually have manufacturing facilities here. So I can actually load up these hoppers with different types of garbage and I can manufacture things. So there's um, ammunition, there's food, there's all sorts of different things I can manufacture. I've tested them all out, they work, but I mean, I don't really use them all that much. I just wanted to see if I could actually make them work and actually have a decent looking factory in the process. And so far, it actually worked out pretty darn good, if I say so myself. So here, we have the main structure, and this is kind of a combination of my typical tower build, like what you saw in my Sunset Drive-In or Starlight Drive-In video, but you also have a modification of my lighthouse build, like what you saw in my Kingsport Lighthouse video. So let's go ahead and explore it a little bit. There's a little kitty cat down there, just doing nothing but making everybody happy. So here we have pretty much just residential and it's nothing special. It's my usual accommodations for most settlers, just a bed, a chest for them to keep their stuff in and not a lot else. So this whole deck is just residential. Moving down here to the bottom deck, we do have some additional reactors. So we do have quite a few turrets at this location. And so I need two fusion generators to power them all. Uh, some people have mentioned that you can get more power out of the vault tech generators, and that's true. But the vault tech generators are also much larger and much more difficult to fit into one of these tower structures. So I usually don't even bother with them. They also use a huge amount of nuclear material, and that's pretty difficult to get your hands on unless you're just running around looking for super mutant suiciders and intentionally letting them detonate themselves. So. I tend to use these because they're more efficient for space and they're more efficient for those hard to find construction materials. So down here we have a couple more just general quarters, but we also have my location. So normally I put like overseer's quarters, but I figured for the Far Harbor DLC, Captain was more fitting for this location. And this is a little, this is a lot more humble than what you normally see for my overseer suite. So we do have a couch and a coffee table. We have a dining table and we do have small work area, some chests and dressers to put my junk in. And we do have a private lavatory here just for me. So there is quite a bit of luxury for wasteland standards in here but for the most part, it's not the most extra or extravagant thing I've ever built. All right, moving up to the second floor. So we do have a regular lavatory for the rest of the settlers here. So it's a toilet, a sink, and a power shower. So you do need to be able to power this. It's kind of clipping through the floor on the next deck above but it does work, you get clean, and it cleans off all your rads. Because it's basically just a decon chamber. All right, rest of the deck is nothing special. It's all still just residential. Usually I use blue doors to denote residential just so you can instantly look down a row and see what's gonna be in it. Same for this deck, there is a lavatory up here but there's also a few things. So one, there is this empty room, which I really haven't decided what to do with. Sometimes I don't completely plan out these builds. I just start with the largest structure I can and then I populate it. So there's actually room for something that I could add in here later, whether that's a gym or something else. In fact, I think I had planned on this being a gym at one time. 
Um, and then here we have our usual arcade. So we have your creation club arcade stations, which all produce or produce happiness for your settlement. And the same here with these uh, slot machines from Vault 88. They generate happiness for my settlement, so I don't have to assign a whole bunch of people to bars like you see with a lot of other uh, settlement builds. And so that's the arcade. All right, moving up to the top deck of the lighthouse structure. So this is where we have our rooftop garden. So pretty much anything you would want to be able to eat, they grow here. There are potatoes, there is corn, there are melons, there's, I mean, there's pretty much everything. There may, may be missing gourds or something. Um, Okay, there are. I was like, there's no food here. They must have all despawned. So every once in a while, I do run into some bugs where the settlers don't, or they'll basically unassign themselves. So there is a bit of a problem where if I leave a settlement too long or perform certain actions, they'll all just stop doing a job and then their happiness goes to zero. But here it looks like there's just a problem with the food actually spawning in. All right, so now let's go up to our actual lighthouse structure. So this, like my Kingsport lighthouse structure, is a little bit unpopulated at the moment, but it's also, I think that I was able to get a larger floor space area out of this, so you can actually put more stuff in. So there is room to expand a pretty decent amount um, and actually utilize this tower if you want, but for my purposes, I was just really after a lighthouse, so I didn't really put anything inside it. And then we have our top floor of our lighthouse. So unlike my Kingsport lighthouse where I lived in the top section, my overseer suite was there. Here, the lighthouse is just an actual lighthouse. So we have this big array of street lamps, which are some of the brightest light sources in the workshop. And there's also this row of lights that runs around the outside. So hopefully you don't get vertigo because you can see all the way to the bottom there. And here I was actually able to utilize the whole wraparound vault railing. So it's railed all the way around and it's nice and smooth. It doesn't have any gaps or anything like you tend to get with um, a lot of my other stuff. So I don't exactly know how I was able to accomplish that, but it worked pretty darn good. Uh, <laughs> so there is fog right now, so you can't really see the edge of the map, but really you can only swim out so far before you just get that edge of the world notification and you can't go any further. So that is our lighthouse. Effective and visible from a pretty long way away, or at least as long as constructed objects are visible in the game's engine. All right, so here we have kind of this walkway. There is a pre-existing dock, so you can see it here where I can't completely build over it because of the workshop stuff can't clip through it. But I was able to cover most of it up, and I do have here where you can clip some flooring through some of the side rock, just not through the dock itself. And so we have kind of this nice boardwalk area. This is one of the few settlements where I actually used an industrial water purifier because this is one of the few places where it doesn't look out of place. Um, and so I was able to use that here. It looks pretty official, like you would actually see this here at a, at a location that's on the beach. And there's enough of a buildable area over the water that it's not problematic and you don't have to squeeze it close to anything to actually make it work. So everything turned out pretty good there. Here's my radio recruitment beacon and a cat trap. Looks like it actually did catch a trap or a cat. So let's go ahead and release it. Yay, kitty. Okay. So over here, we have kind of a little boardwalk area. So we have a number of 
Actually, we don't. We just have a bar. That's interesting. So we have a bar. I don't think it's manned. And this is where I set up my gym, apparently. So here we've got this nice cloth overhang. So it, this looks a lot more organic to what you might find on a post-apocalyptic beach where they're starting to rebuild a settlement here. You also have more use of things like these traditional oil lamps. They look a lot less out of place. I used wood flooring here instead of my typical concrete flooring. So it all came together rather nicely. And I did steal some of this from Oxhorn. So giving credit where credit is due. He originally built one. I think I was able to do a little bit better job about clipping it into the wall. And I think he might have used some mods to accomplish some of that as well. I don't remember. It's been a while since I've seen that video, but um, full full disclosure, I didn't originally come up with the idea to do that. I just did it as best as I could. Uh, so here we do have a number of different picnic tables, some lawn chairs, something that doesn't look out of place like you could have scrounged this out of the island from somewhere. Uh, we do have these parasols that are not entirely intact. We've got some of these park grills, so you can cook food here if you want. Everything doesn't really look that out of place on this location, and I really like how this turned out. So over here, we have our dock area and our main commerce area above it. So this is pretty similar to what you saw at Kingsport Lighthouse. This settlement was actually constructed first, and I think this one... Um, did a little bit better job at some things, a little bit worse at others. But here we have kind of these walk around um, areas where you can store stuff without having to throw it in the main settlement building. We have all these different lobster and crab trap floats like you find all over the rest of the island. So it looks a lot more in place. We also have these fish and mire lurk racks. And I also chose this as the location for the community workshop. So here's where you can go to work on all your stuff. This would be especially important if there actually were sailors coming here to work on their stuff. They wouldn't want to necessarily have to go that far away from their boat or leave the docks necessarily. They could just jump right off the boat here where they would tie up and they can work on their stuff and then go right back to their boat. Eh, you're stuck in the water there. All right, moving up to the second level, we have this area here where we're actually able to look in and see a boat coming in. So this is a nice kind of area where you have a decent view while you're working. And it also gives anyone who would be pulling a boat into this facility to actually see that there are stores and amenities on the second level. You also have this nice dining area over here. We have a nicer bar than the one that's down on the boardwalk. We also have this nice clinic area back here. We've got all these nice pop machines. We've got the mixer machine, all these dispensers. So it goes pretty nicely with the food and bar area. Um, I'm not sure why I put the barber that close to the bar though. I think it probably should have been closer to these waiting couches over here. So that's a little bit of a misplacement on my part. But overall, that is the dock area. And that's pretty much it for the facility. So you do see there is a large number of turrets built all the way around. And if you look here, the entire dock area is also defended. So pretty much any place where people would congregate, whether it is the storefront, the doctor's office, the main living quarters area, the turrets, and over here are all heavily defended by turrets. And I really like that as an in-universe in explanation of where they would place these turrets and why. There's also, if I wanted to, I could probably get away with throwing another tower up here so that they couldn't try and get around the boardwalk to escape the field of fire from here. But in reality, they almost always charge right at it. So they almost always spawn like between these three trees and they just run straight up there for some stupid reason. And so that's the perfect place to put it. Oh no, the slog's under attack. 
And so that is my build. If you have any feedback or comments or ideas for how to improve this settlement, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. Once again, this is done completely without mods with the exception of a few Creation Club items here and there like in the arcade. And for the most part, this is all done just using the base game along with all of the necessary uh, DLC. So this was a really fun settlement to build. I had a great time taking and incorporating a lot of these ideas that I have from other styles of settlements and incorporating them all into a single cohesive location and being able to use all of these even though there is some difficult terrain to have to work around. Stay safe and I'll see you all here next time at Grey Gaming. Have a good one.